I was Zoha to be close with the legend Rabbi Greenwald. I was Zoha. And he says, why are so many kids off the derech? He says, when you make the derech this narrow, <laughs> there's not much room. So you got to widen the derech. That's it. When, when the system is like this, so then you'll see, people will say, I'm, I hate the system. Why is everybody hating the system? Because you made the system the goal. That's not the goal. The system is there to serve the children. The parents are there to serve the children. They're not, the children are not there to serve the parents. Welcome back to another episode of Inspiration for the Nation. This week, I got to sit down with Rabbi Yoni Fisher. Rabbi Fisher has been suggested by hundreds of his Talmidim. And I saw something. They are so into the Rosh Yeshiva. I'm like, who? what is, okay, I, I've heard of him. I've heard of Fisher's Yeshiva. I've heard of the rehab he has in the old city. But to be honest, nothing could have prepared me for this conversation. He's probably the most authentic person I've ever spoken to. He's so real and I, I totally understand why people love him. And I think the way he describes caring about people, understanding ourselves is the future of Chinuch if it's not already now. And I can say this about every episode, this conversation changed my life. I recorded this a few weeks ago. I've literally been quoting, and I've even mentioned it in a few interviews, I've been quoting Rabbi Fisher um, a few times. So watch the entire thing. Uh, it's a tra it's like a mikvah. You're going to walk into a mikvah now. You'll be transformed. Uh, I re-listened to this episode because it's so amazing. I will tell you all about an incredible podcast that I want you to check out, as well as an incredible WhatsApp status, WhatsApp group that I love. This is Episode is in memory of Shem and David ben Yaakov Shlomo and also Miriam Sarap as Yaakov Moshe. Here is my epic conversation with Rabbi Fisher. I'm Yaakov Langer and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Okay, here we are with Rabbi Yoni Fisher, all the way from Eretz Yisrael. Thank you for coming in. I don't think you came in for this, but uh, it's on the list of things that was important to you. So thank you yeah, for coming in. My really pleasure. Thank that. you. So you just came from a Masiba. Right. How was that? Amazing. Yeah? It was great. How yeah. many guys came? A lot of guys came. It was actually a fundraiser, fun bringing, you know, it was uh, beautiful. Always good to get together with people and Matsi Shabbos. It's uh, right. just music and love and connection, What you know, beautiful. It's great. So it's taking me back to growing up. You grew up in Baltimore. Right. Who would you say who had like the biggest impact on your childhood? Wow. I like that question. Wow. Who had the biggest impact? Maybe my grandmother. Yeah? Yeah. Was she a Holocaust survivor? She was a Holocaust survivor, yeah. She was, uh, she, she herself wasn't in the camps, but her whole family were murdered. And she was like a, she, uh, she was a very special lady and we were very close. Wow. Very, very close, yeah. Okay. So when you were younger, did you anticipate or want to become a Rosh Hashiva or a Rebbe? Was that like in the plans? Um, I never looked at it that way. I think I knew that I had I was gifted, like I was, you know, geo president. I was uh I was good with people. I loved the stage. Even though I'm I even though naturally I'm a very like um I don't know if I'm not necessarily a shy person, but I'm not like, you know, the life of the party, mm -hmm. but I'm a connector, but the stage and and sharing and, you know, like loving, you know, people and wanting to help people and wanting to uh, share Hashem and, and happiness, I think was always very deep mm -hmm. inside of me. I don't know if I ever thought Rosh Hashiva or, but like I, I felt something I always felt something very, you know, um, deep inside of me as far as Hashem. And as little as I, I, from my earliest memories, I felt very connected to Hashem in like a weird way, like not in a, like, uh, I definitely had a lot of anxiety when I was a kid. And I think that that was later on in my life, I discovered that that was probably, obviously it's all, 
the way Hashem does things, mm-hmm. but like that anxiety as a kid, and back then nobody knew what anxiety, I wasn't like opening up to my parents, I think I have anxiety right, or something. Right. It didn't like, exist then. Right, exactly, and I, and I think as a little kid, like I really like felt a connection to like something bigger than me and something like, and, and it worked. Th- meaning through the anxiety? Right, again, that's getting a little more psychological about it. Okay. I think I think that was a very big impetus mm-hmm. for me to like reach, connect Hashem was like when you're a little kid and you have anxiety and you don't know what that, I remember I had separate, I remember recently I spoke about it in one of my shoe room. A lot of people liked it because they, you know, I had, I didn't know it was separation anxiety. I had this feeling that like I, I went to like the dentist or somewhere and like my family would run away from me and not exist. I remember like I needed to like rely on, on, something else mm. and it was like uh yeah it was very deep as I, later on in life i realized it might you know if then i would have may, maybe been diagnosed with anxiety i'd be like just a regular like i wouldn't you know maybe i wouldn't have you know hashem made it maybe something like that. i don't know that's no no that's very interesting well, so that's it. yeah it when did you realize when did you realize that that you had anxiety then more like in my teens and mm-hmm. twi- you know when t- before marriage you know like right. when I was already like you know why do I feel you know and I think I had regular anxiety like a lot of people just but it, but to date it back as so young you know I grew up more my my uh, my my family um, was not as you know uh, um, what's the word um, more. I, I sort of rebelled a little bit, becoming more, you know, uh, connected to Torah and, and you they know. They weren't Hashem. as yeshivish. Right, right. Yeah, I don't like that word so okay. much, but they Hold on, weren't. Wait. No, I'm sorry. Wait, well, why don't you like that word? That we, We're going to get into a whole conversation. Right? Maybe, sorry. I don't know. Let's... I don't let my children, yeah. good, I'll say it right now. Yeah, I'm proud it. to say this. I don't, we don't use in our house the word Haredi, modern Orthodox, Chiloni, secular, uh, no labeling of a uh, Jew is a Jew. Mm. What, uh, we don't. How don't, would you like? How I don't, would, so that's why I don't like those words because it, it just it. It, uh, you know. But uh, but even, I guess in this instance, like it's it's hard to like let's say, communicate. Pu- yeah, meaning so, uh, like as labels far as have, communication. Mm-hmm. I would do it for something for this forum, but I don't even like that because I th- you know I, that's why I was saying I I wasn't the family wasn't so into let's say learning a lot. Not we were Orthodox mm-hmm. and. And that, but I, I went a little bit more extreme in my, you know, you know, Judaism and Torah and, and connection to Hashem. That's all. Was I'll that, say it like that was that difficult for you? Sure, or for your of family? course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was very, especially back then in the eighties, nineties. It wasn't, it wasn't as popular as it is now, you know, as as it became. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't. A lot of people didn't just uh, do what I did, you know, and. Uh, Whatever, yeah. I had a call. I had a. I've always had a very deep calling for God and for Hashem, for people, for the Jewish people. For I was born on Tisha B'av, oh, which wow. is very. Um, uh, of course, I. I don't. I I'm don't. Like, am I talking to Mashiach right now? <laughs> like. So my Bubby used to say, "You can only imagine, right? Right." right. So I don't have a Mashiach Baruch Hashem. I'm healthy. I'm not. I don't have a Mashiach <laughs> complex. Right. Okay. You know. I don't. You know, I just, I just know that just as I look back, especially as I'm older now, I, as I look back, like there's no question there were very clear signs for me, whether it's psychological, however Hashem set it up, you know, existential. I was in, I, I was in a master's um, program in Loyola in, in um, Baltimore because I went to Near Israel mm-hmm. and I was there and I did a paper on, on, uh, on um, pastoral counseling. So I did amazing program in a Catholic school, Loyola, uh, with a bunch. I was like the only Orthodox, actually Jew for that matter, but for sure that, and in my class for sure. And then there were a few others, but I'm saying basically, and I had to write a paper, like a 20, 30 page paper on my development as a person from, and I say in yeshiva for, for, I, I, I probably will one day have guys do this because it changed my life. I had to write a paper on myself um, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, dot, 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 from my, from my, I interviewed my mother when she was pregnant with me, what she was going through in her life, which, which affected me in, you know, as a fetus, wow. all the way till I was like 28, how my stages were affected. It's like incredible. Wow. You know, yeah, it was incredible. 
it sounds like it's like a life changing experience yeah, to go yeah, through that incredible. with like your mother. Yeah, it was great. Or whoever. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah well, I watched videos when I was a child, like where where I was in the family. You know what stage, what the family was going. You know, different, whatever. It was was like, it ever awkward to bring up like certain questions when you're like talking to whoever for this assignment? Could be. I don't oh, you remember. Don't remember. Yeah, Could be. Yeah, ago. yeah. But I was also always. I've always been very um, trying to be open and true to myself and mm -hmm. true to the, the. You know, I. I don't know what where that's from. You know, I definitely have amazing parents. Um, I mean, my father passed away. I, he's still an amazing parent, but I'm saying I, 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 meaning wonderful people, but, but I was always very unique, even now, very open and love to share and want to have those relationships where people share. And I, and it's incredible because I think that as far as Yiddishkeit and what people actually suffer from, I know myself is, you know, the more we keep things to ourselves. And it's ironic that the base of Migdash is not built because of Sinas Chinam, which is the separation of people. Mm. You know, and like um, one of my favorite quotes is um, greater, better to walk with someone in darkness than to be alone in the light. Hmm. You know, the the shared connection. You know, it's actually this week's parsha where it says that. I'm not sure when this is airing, but but go on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no. So but the parsha I of, of, of Shmos. Yeah. Where it talks about Mitzrayim, which is the essence of the Jewish people, were always being tortured and beaten, and 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 they say that that until Paro stopped the Jews from getting together on Shabbos, there's a medrash that says they used to get together. I think I'm quoting it properly that they used to get together on Shabbos. They say they said Mizmar Shirli on Shabbos, and they used to be machazik each other and talk with each other and help each other and be machazik, strengthen each other, and they were okay. Meaning they were going through their their Gehenim, but as long as they had each other, they were okay. So in the darkness, they were with each other. It's like incredible. Is that incredible? No, it's crazy. And then only it's... when, only when Paro figured that out and he said they should work on Shabbos also, that's when Moshe, it could be that was the Lama Hariosa, they say, like, he was like, that's it. Now, God, we can't, Eov, I think that's the famous shot. They say Eov. Hashem took away everything, but not a friend. If he took away his friends, he wouldn't have been able to survive. There's that rat, you know the famous rat park? I'm, I might be misquoting it. Someone could look it up. I've quoted it many times. I should actually look it up sometimes because <laughs> I quote it all the time. They have a they have a a um, an experiment that they did with rats who I think I'm quoting it right, who and they injected them with heroin. So they were heroin addicts. The, the rats mm -hmm. and then they took one rat and they left it alone to detox and whatever the rat died then they did the same thing with another rat and put it with another rat or other rats and it survived hmm. and that's a rat wow so could you imagine a human being to be able to ish l'reyehu yazoiru Mashiach they say ikvas in the Mashiach is ish l'reyehu yazoiru l'chiv yoimer chazak is Mashiach is that we are that we got to be there for each other in the darkness in our in our pain in our in our hurting and what 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 I see the most am I saying too much of it no no I, I'm fascinated go continue what, what 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 I see the most in my own personal journey which I could talk about and what I see with other guys and people is that is that when we hold things you know inside and we don't share then we suffer we suffer in silence. And, and it's terrible. And the more we learn to share, you know, I, and I, I've always said this, I said, people say introvert, extrovert. I say, it's not about talking a lot. If somebody could talk a lot. I say a lot of times, I say it triggers the talkers a lot, people who talk a lot, it triggers them. And I say, and I don't mean to trigger anybody, mm -hmm. but I say that sometimes people talk a lot because they don't really want to share what they really want to share. Mm -hmm. So their talking is like a decoy to, to get away from, from uh, so they say, oh, I'm an extrovert. I tell you, you know what I mean? No, you're not. You don't. I don't even know psychologically what the difference is. But I'm saying, in the colloquial way of saying it, you know, oh, you, you got to talk a lot. It's not about talking a lot. It's about sharing. It's about sharing what you know, what what's inside. And I know my yeah. Yeah, no, no it's it's. Well, I, I want, yeah, I would rather hear what you have to say. Yeah, what were you about to say? And I know myself. I know with myself with my own my own healing. You know, because, because, you know, in order for me to help others, 
which is not necessarily my goal that I need to be healthy myself and heal healers need to heal you know if I'm you know and through my own healing that I do now that I you know my own journey in that is that the more I learn to to share me and it doesn't I don't mean share just anything it means share whether it's share my childhood, whether it's share my experiences, whether it's sharing my fears and my insecurities. I love, I love when people share, and I think everybody loves it. When someone gets up and says, you know what, I'm nervous and and it's hard for me to talk. And I'm, you know, you know, I would say I'm nervous. I happen not to be nervous now, you know. I, I but if I was nervous now or coming to this interview, I'm, I'm, I get more excited. I've I've done this for a long time where I share and mm-hmm. I and I'm more comfortable because I know people listen. Meaning not because they're listening, but I I you know I, I'm okay. I'm more just comfortable because when you do something many times. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I love. I think everyone loves when people share share how they feel, even when that that sharing is hard. When someone says like, you know what, I'm insecure, I'm nervous. When I was a kid, you know, that's one thing that I that I see tremendously. Like people are embarrassed, you know, and they're shamed to feel, you know, insecure, you know, shame to feel nervous, shame to feel like it's terrible. Like, you know, I'm driving to the airport with my son, you know, Tati, I'm nervous. A lot of times a parent, what do you don't be nervous. Hmm. What do you don't be nervous? Why not? It's good to be nervous. It's well, so in okay. the history of people like, don't be nervous. Okay, now I'm not nervous. Right, exactly. You know, like, right. That, that besides, right. Besides the fact that it doesn't help, but it's but it's but it's a message that is that is that is that is projected from the, the person himself. Well, first of all, you're nervous. Secondly, what's who who says there's something wrong with being nervous? Yes. Are there medical mental problem yeah we're not talking about somebody who's seeing a psychiatrist who sits in his room all day because he's nervous to walk out the door in his own home right uh, we're, we're not we're not talking about psychiatric you know and people who suffer and i'm not we're not you know talking about nervous i'm nervous i scared you know we who that's healthy right so that's what i'm saying when we share that you know you know and that's what i tell my guys all the time in yeshiva i say like i'm you, we're all the same we're the same oh because i have a beard Hmm. And I'm a rabbi, whatever that means. I have payas, and I'm the Rosh Hashiva. And therefore, what? Therefore, what? Therefore, I don't have struggles. Why not? I have as many. Could be I have more struggles than you. I don't have my shortcomings. Uh, I'm, I have probably more because I'm older, and I've you know what I mean. So we're all in the same boat. So let's learn from each other. Well, why do you think that this era or generation is so scared to share their feelings? That's a great question. First of all, I don't know. I don't. I I think that people are much more open than than it's ever been with sharing. You think feelings. it's the most now? I think old school was not into feelings. No, I know. Like a hundred years ago, clearly wasn't. Right. We're not like, even that. Even my parents' generation right, wasn't. Right. It wasn't about hugs and love you, and you know what's that fiddler on the roof? Do you love me? Like, do you love me? I've been doing your laundry for fifty. Whatever the song. Anyone who knows fiddler on the roof, I'm not a big fiddler on the roof guy. Just I know that that concept. I don't know if necessarily. I think we're very. I think people are much more into sharing i think also maybe this is what you're saying yakov i i think that i think there's a lot of hurt that people have more a lot now i think there's a lot of there's a lot of fragile i think people are are are, there's a lot of confusion in different stuff we could talk about i don't know how how open i can be you could be as open as you know i'm saying people struggle with sexuality now a lot more than they they ever did Mm -hmm. with homosexuality with with just the world, you know, gender, you know what I mean? So ki- that doesn't mean the from world is not exposed to that. So if you're a kid and you have sexuality, you know, that's going to be scary to share. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to share, right? If I think I'm gay and I'm a 10-year-old kid or a 15-year-old kid in yeshiva, right. you better not share that. Right, it's very scary. So right. that's hard to share. You know, if you're, you know, you're not, you don't like davening, you're going to share that? If you don't know about God, I'm not sure I believe in God. Are you going to share that? You ain't going to share that, and that's that's hard. That's is it hard. because this meaning this the way the system is that like it's not at least so again we we can get into that. Mm. Um, I, I don't I don't I think that. I, I, listen, I don't think there's the system. I think you know Baruch Hashem. You know there's there's so many beautiful systems and mechanchim, and I don't know what you know. It's not 
Velazhen, right. you know, anymore. Right. So I don't look at it anymore as like the system. I think there's beautiful chinuch going on. I think that it's about it's about um, you know listening, you know listening. I had a pshat in chinuch lenar al pi darko. Um, that goes like this. Why does it say al pi darko? Say chinuch lenar al darko. What's the P darko? So I say, you want to know how to be mechanach, your child, your student, yourself, Al P. What does he say? He has to. He has to say, this is what I need. This is what I need. He meaning, listen to your child, even if it's a four year old child. What what can I, when you're tuned in? So then, you know, can you, can you give me an example of of how yeah to yeah do that? how 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 are you? What what's bothering you? What can I do for you? The children know everything. Everybody knows everything. They know what's, okay, you might need to, you know, instead of shutting down, this is what you should do, should do. I'm a very anti the word should. Should is guilt, connotes guilt. And, you know, I should do this. What do, what do I want to do? What do I feel like doing? But do it I, isn't like, I'm thinking like, think of someone in particular, like yeah, old yeah. school saying of like, no, because if if you take that out, then no one's going to do anything, and oh, everyone's going to. So I so first of all, that's not true. Okay. Secondly, that's not my experience, and I could say both. The reason it's not true is because I believe that that it's not that I believe people want to do good things. If we're going into already talking about chinuch and kids, an elementary school kid who has a father who's a, a, a you know a, a God fearing Jew, a mother, a family, he has it. He just wants to be himself. He wants to be heard. He wants to be listened to. No kid who acts out in davening or class or anything, no kid is, this is a big thing that I, that I speak a lot about. No kid is, is, evil. is evil, wrong, doing anything. It's us. It's the parents. It's the teachers. It's the system. Sorry. It's the system he's in, the institution he's in. That's the problem. And we need to service that child. The child doesn't service the system. Mm. The system services the child. And the system will destroy itself and destroy the children when its system alone is what it's, is becomes the end in itself. The system is a means to an end, not an end in itself. When the system becomes the end in itself, it will self-destruct and nobody will be able to. And what's the proof? The proof is, as Ronnie Greenwald, Rabbi Greenwald, I was Zoha to be close with the legend Rabbi Greenwald. I was Zoha. And he says, why are so many kids off the derech? He says, when you make the derech this narrow, hmm. there's not much room. So you got to widen the derech. That's it. When when the system is like this, so then you'll see, people will say, I'm, I hate the system. Why is everybody hating the system? Because you made the system the goal. That's not the goal. The system is there to serve the children. The parents are there to serve the children. They're not, the children are not there to serve the parents. Okay, you're going to say, keep it up, aim. Well, chill out. <laughs> chill out. Right. Well, when I, when I, yeah. But hold on. I, 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 could, take, I yeah. could take into what you're saying because yeah. I subscribe to this. Right. But I know so many old time thinkers that are like well we're we're, we're, we're no because the, they're listening the to thinkers, it and I, no i know that but, yeah, we're, but like we're, i'm just trying good. to good let them call in and or let <laughs> them to whatsapp you or send you an email and say good i'd love to discuss it. And, I, and you know i want to tell you something i don't think anybody disagrees i'm not saying anything controversial i'm not saying anything that everybody doesn't know i'm not i don't need makoros i could bring makoros i don't need it with makoros we're talking about just 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 loving you know your children being, it's, being, you know what it probably is, and I don't want to get canceled for this, but it's probably because the the type of thinking that is against what you're saying is probably themselves filled with some forms of insecurity. And, you're correct, and they're getting. I don't think anyone's and when against. You say like, right? What, what? What? What am I saying that that someone would be against? Good, good. If you want, no. I, mean, what? I, I again, I'm literally I'm thinking one person in particular, right. and there's no way they're yeah, listening or watching and this. Anyone. But they they they're gonna say they will still even after what you just said I think they'll still fight back and they'll say no it's just not it okay. wasn't done like okay. that before and we're gonna be weaker. Okay. Right. Yeah, they're, they're stupid. You're saying it's not even a conversation. You can't even it's have not a conversation. conversation. No, right. it's not. It's not a. It's not a. It's not. 
I mean, I, I could get a quote of, of someone who said that if somebody is just saying, I want to get the exact quote, if someone is saying something in the name of Missouri, I'm not going to quote it right, so it doesn't make sense. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. But basically, like, it's not, well, oh, well, we didn't do this in Europe. First of all, we're not in Europe. Second mm -hmm. of all, I don't care what you did or didn't do. I'm talking about listening to this child who's right in front of me. What is he telling me? He's telling me that he's struggling with something. So my job as a parent, my job as a machanach, is to say, how can I be there for him in his struggle? Now, sometimes that means that he, that it's not the right school for him. You know, I just said tonight, v'chol b'nei Yisrael ha yoar b'may shvaisam, right, in a few parashiyas, in, in I, I think it's in uh, Bo, uh, by Choshech, so it's in Bo, where it says, oh, the Jewish people had light, right? The Mitzram had darkness. The Jewish people had light. The Rizhner says one of most, my most favorite pshatim in the world. The Rizhner of Yisrael from Rizhen says that, that um, you take a diamond that is covered with, with dirt and is, is dirty. It looks terrible. You shine it. You wash it. You put it with other diamonds. You get it a beautiful case. You put it in that. It looks gorgeous. When it's when it's dirty and whatever, you, it looks disgusting. So he says like this. He says, V'chol b'nei Yisrael hayar, every Jew is so like a diamond, shining. Bimoshvosam. They have to be in the right setting. Hmm. And when they're in the right setting, they shine. The, pe the reason people don't shine, and I'm talking about children, let's talk children, you're right, I'm not talking about 25 years, but that's also true. Mm -hmm. But, well, but, but, the reason children don't shine is because they're not in the right environment. Mm. They don't have the right teacher. They don't have the right friends. They don't have the right school system. They're beautiful. Oh, he's wild. He's at, no kid is wild. Kids are not wild. Kids have energy. Kids have excitement. Mm. Kids are, are a halavai. We learn from children. Mm. What do we do? We say, shh, shh be quiet. You know, why? Because mm -hmm. we, because I'm embarrassed. I say this story all the time. I remember when I was a, in Shayashiv, so I used to sit up front, a big place. Um, and I remember when I was a younger parent. So I remember my oldest son, you know, my uh, my second child, but my oldest son come to shul with me. I, w I had anxiety from the beginning <laughs> till the end. Why? Yes, sir, you got to sit with me. Come on. <laughs> People are looking, Rabbi Fisher's son, blah, 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 blah. Until I just said, is this for me hmm. or is this for him? Am I doing this? So, uh, and meanwhile, I'm anxious. He's got to learn to daven. Why? For me. So, wait, wait, wait. Let me scratch my head. <laughs> Tati, okay, I want to run around the play, okay? Well, I, I can't look at that objectively. So, am I telling you to daven, 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 because that's what you need to do, or for myself? Now, people will say, okay, uh, so what? I'm not allowed to tell my kid to daven? No, that's not the point. The point is, what are you getting all angry about it? Why are you getting it all? Why is it? Why are you getting all anxious? Why again, you know, I, I tell it to people all the time, right? Why is it triggering you? You could tell your kid, you got to stop doing this. You can have, with your wife, you can have a, a problem. It triggers me when I do, what are you getting all angry about it? Let's have a conversation. Let's share. Let's talk. Well, what do you, what do you do when you approach someone or, you know, maybe as, as, maybe as a Talmud that like, they're just so close. They don't want to open up. They don't. That's okay. It, you don't have to open up. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When but someone, what if you want to work on a relationship or great. go deep? So then, so if someone says one of the most open things a person can say is that I don't want to open up. That's a very open up. That's a very open statement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to share with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for sharing. Right, right. I don't feel comfortable talking about this. I respect that. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Okay, so I, I it take me through. Well, uh, before before I go to yeah. questions about yeshiva. D did you want to become a psychologist? Like it would, I, to me, it yeah, seems you know like what? very yeah, up yeah, your alley. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I, 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 um, it's not that I wanted to become a psychologist. I just, um, I just love people and I love the beauty of, of people. And but isn't guess, that what psychologists do? Like they, they, they understand people yeah, and then maybe, they, yeah, they help but I also walk them remember I, I was also very into learning and uh -huh. Torah right. and Hashem. And the truth is, I, I don't, Look at psychology so much as, you know, Masil Zisharm is my shear that I give. I've done Masil Zisharm. I, I know that safer. I mean, I have to chazer it over and over. I probably know it like very, very well. well it's it's things thought. that you, you already know. It's just a, it's a, a forum. I right, know. I'm, I'm, correct. Just, I'm, I'm like jokingly saying like that's the beginning of it, right? He's like, these are all things everyone already knows. Correct. And like 
at least when I'm learning for the first time, I'm right. like, I, I, I don't know, I don't this. know this. Right. This is essential. No, but but I, I, didn't know I could tell you most of the things that I could quote and say, and I don't like saying, oh, it's there, because then people could disagree, you know, oh, but it says it there in this chazal, that chazal. I don't want I'm not, we're not giving a sheer now with this, mm-hmm. as far as that, but, but, uh, most of the things that come out of, uh, I don't want to say psychology, but I'm saying, you know, it's what, what that's the famous question they ask. Why, uh, why does, why isn't me this, you know, in the Torah? Cause you, the Torah wasn't given to monkeys. We have to become, you know, human beings. So I think the psychology or the Torah, it's the same. It's not, I don't mean how it's chachmas. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the, just the human. One of the one of the tzaddikim, I forgot who it was, maybe the altar from Kelm. I don't want to misquote it, but I could find a quote if anybody wants to know that he says people are fig- trying to understand God and believe in themselves. This is from the altar, one of the altars, either Rabbi Shol Salanta or the altar from Kelm. I think so. So what, what's the, what's the yeah? Quote the quote or? is: yeah. people are busy trying to understand God and believe in themselves. He says you got it backwards. You're supposed to believe in God. And understand yourself. Someone else, I think, would be so slant or also this. I should really get these quotes down. Pat, I'd say this every time I quote it. By the way, you should know people are going to message and email me. Great. Because it's sad. Great. I'm no, no, sorry. no, they're going to message. I'll, I'll okay, forward it great. to you. Awesome. Because they're always like, oh, by the way, right, they're, right, they're right. quoting. He said this. So I was like, I wasn't sure which Rebbe. And like, I get so many people okay, like, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, but it's, it's funny because every time I quote it, I say the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, so it's my my carelessness. <laughs> I'll get it for work you on. once. If anyone's the second one is, the second one is, and if anyone wants to look it up, okay, good. Let's get it. If anyone wants to look up, it's in the Moshe Bamberger has those quotes mm-hmm. from the from the both of these that I'm going to say are in that book. Okay, so I'm going to look in that book to find we're, it. We're giving them a cheat sheet. The Correct. Phone. Okay, what's that's the sec- where they are. What's the second? The one? second one is how can I go and live 70, 80, 90 years and not even get to know myself? Hmm. And that's not Sigmund Freud. That Freud didn't say that, right? That's from one of the Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, Alter from Kelm, someone in that book. Is it? Is it? So, like, so that to me, sorry, Yaakov, yeah, yeah, just to say, it. so that to me is like the knowledge of self-knowledge. The Alter from Kelm is in his book, the green book, the Alter from Kelm, if anyone wants to look it up. I definitely don't know the pages. They say he knew every thought that he thought, he knew what that thought was. Talk about introspection right. and knowing oneself. It's not about psychology. It's not about... You know, yes, our generation, for some reason, I don't know why we need the social work, we need the psychology, we need the college. I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. In my day, that was bad also, by the way. Nowadays, it became mutter. Mm -hmm. I don't know what changed, but that's not for this. uh, So when you, uh, obviously, you're very into like self-development and understanding oneself. It's not that I'm into it. Judaism. Judaism. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm I'm, I'm just promoting what I heard from the tzaddikim. Right. Right, right. So, I'm not, so th- my question is: Is it is it um, that to understand oneself is that a life's mission takes your whole life, or is that. it or is it more of like you have to under- understand yourself, figure yourself out in a certain way, and then the rest of your life begins? Which well, one is your it? Your life will. Be, I'm still figuring myself out. You say you're saying the first one. I can only. I can only listen. I can maybe I'm very slow at the game. Okay. <laughs> I can only you say share you can only, oh, about you about me. Mm-hmm. But what the tzaddikim tell us. Is that they keep on going. They say, Rabbi Israel Meltzer, I think I'm calling this right. I heard this. I think I could, this I could call up. I heard this from a very valid source. I think from Rabbi Yeager, the Rosh Hashiva of Shayashiv. Mm-hmm. Remember saying that Rabbi Israel Meltzer, when he turned 80 years old, he says, okay, now I'm ready to learn Ian. Hmm. Come on. Hmm. Rabbi Israel Meltzer is about right. Aaron Cutler's father in law. Right. And he's telling us at 80 years old, now I'm ready to learn Ian. Right. And the same thing, and the same thing with with us as people. You know what I mean? As so now I'm trying, to, and I can say my own. I I turned this summer 50 years old. I'm right now. You know, I'm in. I I I went to a new therapist. I'm in. Thera- you go to therapy. Yeah. Didn't think you'd share that. I didn't know that. But. You know what? I I was hesitant to share it. Okay. I'm just going to be open with that. Sure. But why? And even if I'm hesitant, it's okay. I'm not embarrassed. I mean, obviously, there's a part of me that's probably embarrassed because I was hesitant. But ultimately, because we grow up thinking, yeah, that correct. But not. I'm saying, but why do I go to therapy? I go to therapy because so I could share more, and I could have my space where I could become a better. I could be a better husband. I could be a better father. I could be a better rebbe. What am I embarrassed about? Why that I have issues? That I have problems? That I have 
Yeah, I do. I have issues. I have problems. I have stuff that I have to continue working out. That's all. Am I a uh, am I a murderer? No. Baruch hmm. Hashem. Am I, am I someone who should be locked up for things? God forbid. Then I would quit and whatever. But I'm saying, yeah, I have my stuff that I need to learn to share and to be, you know, to be a better, more me. One of my greatest quotes that I love that I made up. Everyone says, "Be the best you." I don't like that. Why? Because don't be the best you. Just be you. Hmm. What do you mean the best you? No. Learn to be you. That's the, the process and the tachlis of why we're put in this world. We're put in this world to be shlemus, to be the most me that I can be, the most me. Be the most me. You know, and, and that's that's a journey. You know, that's hard. That's a lifetime journey. You know, it's lifetime. And I'm still, that's what I'm saying. I'm 50 years old and I'm still discovering and it's and it's incredible. I love, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud that I could share. I don't know how many people are going to listen to this. At least like 20, 25 people. At least. No, I'm making a joke. I'm making a joke. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, Even probably, if it is 25 more. people, but I'm going to say something. Great. Right. I You know what? I hope a lot of people listen to this. I hope hundreds of thousands of people can hear a rabbi to hear a grown man who I think I'm a pretty okay guy to say that I struggle and I go to therapy and I love that and I've learned and I've learned from my therapist who's a from Earl Chatzadik of a guy that that I need to learn to be more open with my childhood with who I am and I'm proud of that that's extremely beautiful I think that's really really nice We'll be right back to this week's episode but first I need to clarify something and let's get real now okay this is inspiration for the nation. I get confused with an incredible WhatsApp status, WhatsApp group called Sparks of a Nation. I get it, nation. But I couldn't be prouder and happier to be associated with this incredible WhatsApp status. I don't consume many WhatsApp statuses. I like to create WhatsApp statuses. But this is there's something so special about Sparks of a Nation. If you want to see the behind the scenes of how incredible the Jewish nation truly is, if you want to see pieces of history, things happening now, videos, they're always the first ones to get the content. I mean, it's clearly overlap, but they're incredible with what they do, and it gives me chizik. So if you're looking for more inspiration or sparks of inspiration in your life, go ahead and join their WhatsApp group um, and their WhatsApp status. It's amazing. You, I, just warning, you're gonna be inspired, and it's it's really beautiful. I, I don't cry often, but once every two weeks they get me to tear up, and um, it's enjoyable, it's entertaining, and um, it's it's just really nice to be a part of. So go ahead, you could WhatsApp them at three two three seven nine two zero six one three. You know what? Maybe send them a fax. Maybe they do fax. Is there is there fax sparks of a nation? Probably not. But go ahead and send them a text. You could also, in the show links, if you're using a smartphone, you could tap on that link and it'll take you to them. Join it. You won't regret it. Check them out. Tell them that I sent. Yeah, you don't have to. That makes no difference. But go ahead. Sparks of a nation. Not brought to you by Yaakov Langer, but happily backed by Yaakov Langer. Now back to this week's episode. Would you say that every single person could benefit from going to therapy? How could you? Right. Now, again, people get nervous with that. I share I, I share a lot with my wife. I try and share a lot, you know, with, with the people close to you. You know, I try and share with my kids. Obviously, you don't share with your kids. They're my kids. But mm. I'm saying to just, I'm sharing with you right now. I'm sitting here right now. I'm happy people will listen to this. I, and I love everyone who's going to listen to this. I'm I'm a selfish guy. I'm mm. enjoying the fact that I'm sitting here at night with you. I don't know you, Yaakov. I'm sitting. Well, like, I'm getting to no, know you very right, well. exactly. Yeah. And I, right, I said even before, like I'd like to hear from you. Right, yeah. I like it was very no, nice. but that's a it's, which is by the way very interesting. I, I've done like hundreds of interviews, and it's happened, but it's rare that someone's like asking me no, about I myself really, before. I really, and you did that, and I'll tell you why. Can I tell you why I did that? Sure. I used to have done that maybe out of uncomfortability. 
Okay. Now I don't. So, and then I've worked on myself. Meaning, because you don't want to talk about yourself. You'd no, just like I want to be like that's oh, me. Not, like not I'm be always quiet. focused on no the other person. More like yeah, you know, like like it's the right thing to right, do to it, ask about him. Right. Okay. Now it, this I know it, it comes more because because I love I love you, and when mm. I say I love you, that sounds very, way way too cheesy. Let me say better. I I respect you mm. as a person. You're here. You're doing things, and like I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you because 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 when we learn from each other, we become. You know, I said one of my also one of my favorite lines is: "There's only one person we can't see. That's ourselves. Hmm. It's the only person you can't see." Right. And how do I see myself? I see myself through you. I see myself through other people. And I say, Yaakov, give me. You know, after this interview, I might say, Yaakov. You know, you just heard me for however long you heard me. Like, maybe you could give me insights. Like, what you know? Now, obviously, I don't walk around to every person and do that. I'm not a, I'm a, you know, I, I, I'm a normal person. I'm saying I don't walk around and ask people. But you know, I, 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 uh, I value, I value every person's, you know, experience and their and their unique, you know, kashem shein parts of fame domizulazu. Just like no one looks the same from the beginning of time. Till the end of time, no one looks. That that represents panim. They say panim is the same letters as panim. Pain non yud mem, because hmm. your panim, everyone's panim is different. Your panim. So I want to know Yaakov. Who is this guy Yaakov? Oh yeah, he's a family. I don't know if I can say. Yeah, you sure. Know? Go for it. Yeah, he tells sure. me he's one of four, or right. three older brothers, and I'm like, well, it's interesting. I have two older brothers. Hmm. I can relate to older siblings. Like. Wow, you know, brothers, no sisters. Like, in, right. what I'm saying, like, not all psychology so much. Just like that's Yaakov. Like, who's Yaakov? Like, that's cool. I, I like that. It, it's it's interesting because do I do it? On, I don't know. Maybe I subconsciously do it on interviews. When I've noticed that, whenever I've ever shared a struggle with, like, when I'm you know intimately talking to someone about something. Whenever right. and and just to like detox or vent or just right. you, you know and I I share a struggle that I'm going through, I would say 100 percent of the time they share a struggle that Correct. they're going Isn't through, that- and it's not like for me to hear their struggle, but it's like right. just for me to, but it's oh they always come back it's with incredible. telling me something. Right. I'm like, okay, so, it's like it's contagious. It is contagious when you're open. Correct, and I think people love that because people, you know, we were talking before like. People want chizik. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard from Rabbi Zakatinsky here, a big, big, a very special person. He just said tonight, he was talking, he says, he says, people don't, it's not the chizik. It's, 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 they just want MS. They want author. They want just, you know, you, listen, in relationships, what's, what's a great relationship with your wife? A great relationship with your spouse is that, you know, we're open with each other. It doesn't mean people think, people, people miss, Understands. I tell this to my guys when they're in shaduchim. People think you have to sh- you have to tell them all your y- anything bad you've ever done. Right. That's not that. That's not what we're talking about. Mm. It's not. It's not a, a church where you're. Right. Uh, you know confessing what I mean? Everything. Confessing everything. Right. You could share. You share by saying, "I'm having a. I'm having a hard day. I'm ha- things are hard for me. It's difficult. You know. You know. I'm having a good day. I'm having a." You know, things are, um, my job is hard for me. I'm having trouble getting up in the morning, having trouble going to sleep, um, you know. But I usually feel, in the marriage, like the response is like, you're having a hard time while I'm, but it's an open. No, we can get into Sean Bias. Yeah, Correct. Okay. And I say, great. Now, right. now it's my turn. Right. right, right. A, in 10 minutes, of, you know, that's right. already a Sean Bias right, you know, right, right. Uh, discussion. Okay. So I want to, I want to talk and we could get back into everything we're talking sure, about. Because no, I, I love yeah. it. And I think yeah. I talk about this for like 10 hours. Right. Yeah. Why? It's very authentic Correct. and real because that, that's what people you just said it right now we could talk for 10 hours i could that's why i love talking because hmm. i love not not I, and i love listening i love listening when people share when the guys share with me i could say that's what i do i listen to hear stories to hear to hear i hate to say it, to hear pain you know how good it is to share you know how painful it is to 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 to, to not be able to share pain that that could be more painful than the pain itself. I don't want to. Wow. That maybe we could look up. I just hit that now. This is a I, this is a thought that just came to me right this moment. I'm going to look it up so no one can ask me where'd you get that from, Rabbi Fisher? <laughs> because this is fresh, right now. It's probably more painful for a person, and we're going to look this up by not being able to share than the actual pain itself. Hmm. 
the loneliness the loneliness the 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 suffering and silence and 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 the shame that's where it comes from that's why people suffer a lot from that and in our culture it's very oh, i could i could cry just thinking about it that's where the pain of of when someone is struggling with something so real and he can't tell his parents he can't tell his rebbe he can't speak to my rebbe and say i'm i'm having trouble believing in hashem like like and holding that carrying that alone is worse than than the actual confusion of it mm. so so Okay, sorry. I know I cut no, you no, off. No, no, no. It's fine. No, it's fine. When Again, you said I, that I, thing, I, when you were like, "Yeah," so, so you so, were saying, "Let's get back right so before." So we'll, we'll, we'll get into like the, both of the 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 yeshivas, the places that that you are are running. But let's uh, start off with in Moshe sure. Matasio, the yeshiva yeah. with over two hundred guys. Yeah, yeah. Just, around two hundred. Uh, around yeah, two hundred yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild, crazy. Seven years old. What's your What's your goal when you when these guys are coming to yeshiva? Like what? This. This. This is the goal. This is the goal for them t- to help them find themselves. Be, be right. That's too. It's too like cliche, you know, mm-hmm, to find mm-hmm. themselves. Sorry, I don't mean it that way. No, but no, I'm saying fine. like um, to be themselves. I trust. And what have I seen? I've I've seen guys steiging away and and learning well, and 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 guys also going to work. Guys going to the army. Guys, I don't. My goal is. I, I say this, and I'm proud to say this. My goal is that you don't go to this yeshiva or that yeshiva. You put on a white shirt or don't put on a white shirt, or grow long payas or don't, or put on this type of yarmulke. That's not. That's not my goal. Other yeshivas that might be, and I, and God bless you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sheet to dick like that. I don't like. My goal is you could be a good husband. Be a good husband. If they say after I die, well, and they probably will say this, all Rebbe wanted from us, all Rebbe Fisher really just wanted us to be like a good husband, a good father, a good person. Which you mentioned before, because I, when I was like talking to you like briefly Prior, right before right. I started, like what like what right. you're doing, you're what like- I'm doing. I'm like, right. I'm so like, wh- I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. You, I'm, you said, I'm trying I, to be a good husband. I'm like, okay. What, right, what does that have to do with think, anything? Yeah, right. like you're a Shiva. And- right, exactly. So yes, I know it sounds too, I make it too simple like that. But anyone who's a husband knows that, that that's not simple at all. Right. It's easier to be a Rosh Hashiva than it is to be a good husband. And it's hard to be a Rosh Hashiva. But it's easier to be a, a, a Rosh Hashiva than it is. It's easier to do anything than it is to be a good husband. You know why? Because that's the depth of a relationship of, of, of the panemius of panemius of panemius. And people don't like to hear that because when they don't have good marriages and they're like, uh-oh. So like, and I'm like, sorry. I'm just trying to share what I believe to be true. What I'm married 29 years, poo-poo, bliain hara. I have an amazing, amazing marriage. I know that might sound weird to say that, but I have an amazing, amazing marriage. And it didn't come from just falling in love and being in love. I work like a dog on the marriage. My wife works like a dog on marriage. It's not, I know I don't like that statement, I work like a dog, but I'm saying we work on it. I work on this. I, I work on well, going, you know. What we say is the the secret to, I mean, you said you have a great marriage. Like, what's the secret to that? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not, when I say great marriage, it's more like sharing with someone, being close with someone, mm-hmm. having intimacy intellectually, physically, emotionally, you know, sharing with someone. If I can't share with you, if I can't, it, it all, we're all, it's all the same. It all, it ends up being the same person. Mm-hmm. The, the Masil Sharm has a line. This anyone could look up. I could tell them where it is. You Perak your test. He says, Gam, I could, when it talks about God, you want to talk about Hashem now. He says over there, Gam hu misug ha'oyhavim. God is also in a relationship with you. So if you can't have a good relationship, right? The Kruvim is an ish, the isha. The holiest place in the world is a husband and a wife. Because that's where the relationship is the most powerful relationship. And it's harder than your relationship with your children. My mother always told us, that I don't know where she got this from, but she was so right. The best thing you could do for your children is have a great relationship with your spouse. It's hmm. the best thing you could do. And it makes so much sense. Right. Why? Because your children look up and they see, oh, dad, oh, they're fighting. And I want to say something. It's okay to fight. I tell this to people. There's nothing wrong with fighting. I don't know if that's the right word. Nothing wrong with disagreeing, right, arguing, right. sharing. It's good to see kids to see, okay, you know, you don't want to be throwing things at each right, other, right. yelling at each other, but it's a relationship. So when I say, yeah, Rosh Hashiva, oh, all I want to be is good. Okay, obviously I want to be, but it's easier to be Rabbi Fisher than it is to be 
a good husband, it's much easier because there's only so much, right? Where there's a familiarity breeds contempt. The closer you get to someone, they say, well, like, it's not like that. The closer you get, right? They say it's the difference between the secular, right? The closer you get with Hashem, the more you see the wow. Mm. They say it's the difference between the tzaddikim and the secular, right? The secular public great person, the closer you get to realize you see, oh, wow, this guy is a terrible guy. Right. The tzaddikim, the closer you get, you're like, holy cow. Right. This guy is crazy. I don't even know how deep of a guy this guy is. That's really beautiful. What, what, what do you do in, let's say, yeshiva? Like, let's say a guy lets you down. Like, you, you, uh, and uh, you might be like, I hate that phrase. I don't like it. Sorry, you know? sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know already. Well, it's not that I don't like it. It's not, that's me. That's about me. When someone lets somebody it. down, it's about me. Okay, so he what didn't do, you, do anything wrong. That's, that's fair. What, what do you do when you feel like when I'm he, frustrated, or when you feel like he's <coughs> he's bigger than that? Like he he he's not holding up. What am I doing wrong? That's what I think. Really, really. That's a. Interesting I try to. I, I try to think like that. Mm -hmm. Am I human? And sometimes I get frustrated. Right, right, okay. Obviously. Yeah. Right. Do sometimes I say, well, this guy is just, oh my gosh, it's making me nuts? Yes. But deep down when I check myself, which I do often, I say, what am I not providing? Remember, it goes back to what I told you before. When you're a child, what do you do when a child? Right. Was all, oh yeah, it's my wife's fault, <laughs> right? It's my in-law's fault. It's a, eh, we know all the drill. No, no, no. What, 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 what am I not doing right? What am I not doing right? Why is my child acting like that? What did I do? What did I do to to you know cause this? How could I? But do there that? are times where, like you know, with a child or a student, that you you didn't do anything wrong, no? Or, okay, well, you have to give me a case. I don't know what the problem is. So I don't know. You're right, I, I, exactly. I don't want to like throw any right, of you guys right, on exactly. the bus. You could throw but anybody on. You could say, I, guy's doing drugs. A guy's doing, you could say anything. I don't even know, but. Let, I don't know. What, what, what's, you, your well, question was. So let's do this scenario. Your let's say guy's doing drugs. Your let's say guy's was letting, <laughs> letting someone down. I mean, it's, that, that's my issue. No, so let's say you see, uh, you have a, good, a guy, you think he's doing well, and then you discover he's, he's doing drugs. Right, so all so, I see when someone does drugs is I don't see a guy doing drugs. I see pain. Mm -hmm. That's all I see. And he's like running away pain, from that pain. Whatever, yeah. And I run away from my things. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't run away? I don't do drugs. I run away. I can so run give away me other, so give me other cases. Drinking, uh, sleeping, um, you know, uh, being on your phone a lot. I mean, that's that. I'm we on my phone. About that. I'm crazy we all, on my phone. Who, who's not? Okay, yeah. So we're, that's terrible. We're, we're, well, that's a big challenge. What is it? We're, what am, what are, we're distracted. We don't, we're, it's hard. We're not pre as present. So one of the greatest lines one of my kids told me, one of the greatest lines my youngest kid, he told me because I'm a very I talk about it all the time. Your phone, you come home, your phone. <laughs> my younger one, he's a cutie pie, the youngest, which I'll get into in a second about that. Um, he's like Tati, you're on your phone all the time. I was like, oh my gosh, it was like he took a knife and he stabbed me in my heart, <laughs> and it hurt like H E L L mm. when he said that. And you know what? And I and I was like, it's not true. That's what I felt. But I was like, Yoni, just take it like a man. Like, swallow. It doesn't matter if I think he's right or not. Chanoch Lenar al Pidarko. He just said he, let's say I'm not on my phone all the time, when I'm, which I'm not. See, I'm already defending myself. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what I think that I'm, my son felt that way. So be a man, Yoni. Mm. Look in the mirror right? Don't talk to me that way, son. Keep it of aim, right? That's what someone could say. Right. You're not supposed to say that. That's not, that's chutzpah dick. Hmm. No. Be a man and swallow it. I tell people, Erev Yom Kippur, you know, you, you know who you want? You want to know what to work on? Erev Yom Kippur. This is what you work on. You go over to your wife and you say, honey, what do I have to work on? Hmm. And you write that down. And if you're a real man, I don't mean it like that, but if you're a real gavra, you know what you do? You go over your children and you ask them, what do I have to work on? And they'll tell you what you have to work on. Hmm. That's a very practical and, I, and, and I, good way. And to, ready, Yaakov? Yeah. I do that. Hmm. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that publicly if I didn't do that. And the answers that I get, now my older children obviously are more like, Tati, come on. You know? <laughs> and they won't maybe be, but I push them. I say, you're doing me a chesed. 
You're helping me be a better father, helping me be a better person. To apologize, apologize to my wife in front of my children, to apologize to a child, it's the most beautiful thing in the world to do. To say, I'm sorry that, you know, I've said it, it's embarrassing in this, I'm saying to a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not trying to, but I'm saying it's the most, you know, I, I've, I'm not always the best husband and to say like, uh, you know, it's not nice the way I treated mommy or I said something, whatever, and that's, that's hard. <laughs> Even as I'm talking about it now, it's a little uncomfortable saying, but you know what, you know, we have to learn, you know, we, I don't know how I got off that, but you know, oh, cause you're saying, right. You got to check yourself. You, you mentioned before your, your youngest, <coughs> should we go back? I'm not sure what you're going to say. My youngest child, right. You were, oh, no, I did it. I said it. The oh, Yom you said Kipper. It, you said it. Oh, got it. Yom got Kipper. It. I was saying, yeah, you asked the ch the kids. I was saying the younger kids, they're much easier at right. saying it. There's, okay, yeah, Tati, you, you got to stop doing blah, 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 blah. Like, Could yeah. you tell me about the, I don't officially know the title of it, Yeshiva, the center sure. in, in the old city? Yeah, that's a crazy place. Yeah, that's a rehab center. It's a rehab center. Yeah. Well, so for, for uh, what addic type of addictions, addicts? Any type of. Addiction? Any type of addiction, yeah. So, what are the type of addicts or type? I mean, you have any addict. You have gambling addicts. You have uh, drug addicts. You have um, sex addicts. There are um, cell phone addicts. That's very people. People don't know that. I should probably go. I'm not joking. I am no, totally people, addicted to my cell people, phone. People, we, we're all addicted to our I'm cell I'm not. Phone. No, okay, I just not said addicted. Totally. You're not addicted. I don't it's use hard. it on Shabbos. No, but it's hard. It's but, challenging. But aside for that, I am addicted right? to my we phone. We all are. We're not addicted. That's different. And addicts I really different. think I'm addicted. My wife addicted. would. If I go to my wife for younger right, right. she's going to say, go. Someone just told me over phone. this Shabbos, he says, Rabbi Fisher, I have a great idea for a new program because I have uh, uh, programs that I, that I do based on service. What, what, there's a there's a need. I didn't open up the rehab because I was bored. Right. I opened up the rehab when we had over a hundred guys already in yeshiva, because I started seeing that that yeah guys are having trouble stopping to do certain things. We got to help them create. Uh, you know, I'm not sending them out somewhere to that. I wanted to create some type of you know. I didn't Good realize atmosphere. what it was. Yeah, and, and it worked, and it's working. Again, getting into addicts is a whole conversation because people get triggered by that because okay. there's a lot in the, the world of addicts. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a whole world in itself. So, like, what's your involvement in the in that in the old city? I mean, place? it's mine. I go there. I'm I'm there, but I have a whole team. Right, it's all like whole professionals. Set of professionals. Yeah, yeah, they're mm -hmm. all recovering. At yeah, it's a whole twelve steps. It's based on that. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. It's really incredible. Wow. It's it's incredible, it's incredible because the world, our world, there's a lot of addictions out there. There's a lot. There's a lot. I wish more guys would go there because a lot of guys and they because they're suffering, not not because I have any. I don't make money on it. I'm here. I have to collect money for it. I'm not, and well, I'll happily. I know this is not why you came on, but I'll happily put in the okay. the show notes a link for okay, where thank people you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, please. But it, it's not because I'm bored. And it's not because I, I don't have a yeshiva of close to 200 guys that I am need to open up a rehab, just like I'm opening up a farm. You're opening up a farm. Yeah, in the West Bank near where the yeshiva is for the same reason, because we need something that's, you know, rehab is extreme. Mm -hmm. Addic like like uh, uh, like a farm for because me, animals like Dr. Animals. Phil type of thing like he has I don't, a, know, I don't know that he has but I'm saying I don't he know he has Dr. like Dr. A, I know a lot of he's, I don't I don't know exactly I used to watch Dr. Phil growing up but he has a like a horse farm or yeah, something right. horses are very therapeutic yeah. get animals guys oh, yeah, love see. animals and 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 get guys out there and and just that's what you have to be. That's part of it. We have to be in the system. You talk about system. There's no system. Mm -hmm. We have to create systems for the guys. So it hit me that, you know, w the, the rehab is an extreme, you know, and then you, you, we need to do more. We need to provide more for people. Pets. Why is it that nowadays, you'll never, you, we never saw this back in the day where everybody has dogs and dogs, even in the, in the more ultra orthodox world. See, I didn't say yeshiva. <laughs> ultra orthodox world. Dogs is not as, as now it's more popular. You know why? Cause, cause people need, kids need that. Mm. I know kids, I know people who they get for their teenage and it's, and it's amazing. It's, I'll, I'll share, I'll be vulnerable. It's more, I'm sharing for my wife, but we, we didn't have children for five years. And one of the things that we did, like three years in our marriage, we got a rabbit and it was very helpful. It right, was, it was, right. it, again, I mean, Baruch we, we, we had a son since then, but like, I, it, obviously a pet does not yeah, replace no, children, correct, obviously, correct, correct. but it was, it was nice to like have 
so a creature that you take care of Correct. and you love. Feel love. Exactly. Yeah, it is. And especially dogs. Why, why is a kelev called a kelev? You know why? Because kelev, mm. right? A dog knows. You know what? No, no, no. I was say my wife onto the dog. I'm like, oh, listen, I yeah, love that's you. Already a different it's, level. it's a whole nother Correct. level because well, you have to actually take care of it. Correct. But Kalev, well, why is why why they say a dog? They love you. They, they love, love you back. Yeah. And you know what? So take a teenager who who who's suffering. All teenagers who who <laughs> what teenager doesn't need more love? Right. So you have a dog. You walk in the house. I grew up with dogs. You walk in the house. I used to love coming home from school. And 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 the and especially if you if you give the if you hang out with a dog before the at least maybe a puppy I remember I remember we used to hang out um, at at home as a kid with the puppy and then in the morning for some reason or if you gave it the food in the morning it would come to you more than before anyone else hmm. you know what, you know how good that feels right. you come home from school school they beat you up I don't mean just beat you up yeah but school school's hard for people right you come back from school you come in your dog comes run jumps on you. They jump on you, licking you, looking at you. Oh, oh, love. It's awesome. That's really beautiful. That's very right. Nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking if I have any other questions about the the center. I'm calling it center. I don't know if that's the right. Right. It's a, it's really a rehab. It's a program. It's called the program. Fisher's Old City. It's yeah. It's oh, it's hard to. It's only a year and some old. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a re. It's really a rehab. I, What's hard. the feeling that you get when? someone is struggling or going through something and then like you you see the transformation it could be oh slight gosh. or huge yeah, but like it's incredible what's yeah well i thought you were gonna go the other way what do i do when i see uh, people in rejection okay we go that way I, also we do that also yeah yeah, yeah. well they're, it's the same so, question ultimately yes because what they're just opposite answers there's not there's no greater just like how does it feel when we when we how does a person feel when they're when you're doing what you're doing Yaakov? you love it you're alive could be two o'clock in the morning. You're you're passionate. You're alive. Mm. When I'm doing this, I'm alive. I love this. This is Yoni Fisher. This is Rabbi. This is me. I, and this I was is, telling you before, you get, you should, maybe you should have your own podcast. Like maybe I should. Right so you'll help. Maybe you'll help me. With I that. would happily. Um, you know, I, but you hear. But yeah. So and, that's and the, the answer. And the that's the answer. And the reverse is darkness. Is mm. sadness. Is 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 escapism. Is pain. Is is confusion. Is loneliness. It's pain. I see it. That's my heart. My hardest thing is funny. I'm opening up over here. The hardest thing for my job, I would say, my job. I mean, fundraising is hard, also. Yeah. But the fun, but the probably the harder than that is when I know what somebody needs, and I know what he needs to help himself, and and he doesn't do it. And I say that that's really probably probably the way Hashem feels, you know, in a certain way. That when, you know, we look at it like when we do a virus or we do something wrong, Hashem's like angry at us. It's so not true. He's not angry at us. I'm not angry when someone, you know, I, I'm, 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 it hurts. People look at it like, oh, you're hurting. You know what I mean? Hashem, it's not that he hurts that like, oh, he's going to punish you. Is that Hashem loves you. He wants you to, he wants you to have a great life. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be, when we do Averis, we this, so we're, we're just locking ourselves up, whatever, that's a different conversation. But but the point is, when I see someone who is who is suffering, and I'm like, you know, it's like putting your arm out to someone and they, they can't even reach out to it. That's pain, because it's like, I, I, Yaakov, I could help, Yaakov, you're, you're hurting, I could help you, I could this, like, what, what? We'll be right back to this episode, but imagine this, you just retired, you've had a wonderful work life, and you realize that you learned so much along the way, and then you wake up. You just be around 30 to 40 years, but you still remember all of the best tips, lessons, and experiences. That's what this new podcast is. Join Steve Savitsky, the president of B'nai Zion, on his new podcast, Unrestricted. Steve interviews noted public figures that have returned to a more private life, sharing stories, lessons learned, and the values and ideas that kept them loyal to their missions. Each interview, Steve finds fascinating people who have been a massive force in an organization and changed the world. But this time, there's no strings attached. The guests have moved on or they're retired. Their conversations are completely uh, unrestricted. Yep. Listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. I listened. Uh, I really enjoyed both episodes, particularly the second episode that I listened to. Really, really great. Uh, Steve does a great job at 
carrying the conversation and he gets great guests. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and share in the comments which episode you saw Steve on in Inspiration for the Nation. Yes, he made an appearance. So let's see how good you are with Inspiration for the Nation trivia. So go ahead, check out their podcast. We'll have a link in the show notes. It's great. If you're listening to this and you like it, it's 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 very similar to be honest, but it's such a different flavor. I love the the idea behind it and it's it's really cool to hear from people that are so experienced, but they're also like free to talk about everything and it's it's really great. So, go ahead and check them out. Now back to this week's episode. It's how do how do you hold on to that? I'm saying you seem like a very open person and close with the people that it, right. it they are struggling. How do you hold all but that? It's pain? almost it's so, so I have a therapist. Okay. Um, I share a lot. It's hard for me. It's one of the reasons I, I started therapy more is like, because I, I, I carry a lot and I have to also learn part of his learning, you know, codependency. I don't know if you're familiar with codependency is okay. We definitely put on your, we could discuss afterwards. That's because mm. that's very, um, current a lot of people suffer from that um but again it's learning everyone suffers from codependency to some degree I don't, what is code i don't even know right, okay is. okay codependency you basically, it for me? Like, yeah basically is that codependency is basically like um i need to help you i need to do for you so mm-hmm. i'm not able to set boundaries or different things to take care of myself i hope i'm defining for all the psychologists who are listening everything i'll just say pia melody codependence facing codependence iron shum look mm-hmm. over there. that's that's it's a there's a there's a meadows in arizona it's a fa- it's a she's a known you know it's a known thing codependency mm-hmm. so but, okay. but i'm just using that as a term of of learning how to set boundaries to know that i'm not responsible to take care of you mm-hmm. you know people who right. are not you know codependency is like an example like someone who lives with an alcoholic and can't divorce them or can't set the boundaries and say well you know i i'm there to take care of the alcoholic even though he comes home every night drinks and beats me and the children mm. or the wife beats him and the children, whoever's the alcoholic. Right. And so the codependent would be the one who's with with the one. Who, so they're part of the problem because I have to take care of my alcoholic spouse or whatever it is. Right. Well, when someone just looking from the outside is like, no, no, you have to, this has to stop. This so has to you stop, have to right. Leave but a codependent or, can't do that. But whatever. Mm, got it. That's already, I, I'm not holding enough in that to continue right. this discussion right, about because right, right. it's, a, it's a massive it's like addictions. It's talking about addictions. It's a whole, it's world, a whole right. world in right. itself, right? Wow. But uh, but the reason I was saying that is because part of you saying, how do I hold it? You know, part of the things I, I have to learn also, which is part of the things you learn, I've learned is also learning to separate myself right. from the, you know. It's, um. I'm thinking of two things that that happened. Uh, one was the first interview I did was with Rev Eitan Feiner, and he was saying how like, it's so difficult being a rub because he said, he's like, I sometimes cry myself to sleep. Like correct, just right, dealing with correct, all the correct. troubles that people correct, are going through. I'm correct, like, correct. I, I found, I'm there with him. I, I feel it. I, every Purim, when I get drunk, drunk, when I drink, I don't get, I don't know if I get drunk. I drink on Purim and it's a very holy time for me. I, I just, that I, I, uh, I hold it up for like a year and then I just, I cry a lot. I, I hold a lot, yeah. But recently I've learned with, you know, it's interesting. Part of it I thought, you know, I could tell this to all rabbis or all people who are mechanchim or people in general who are therapists for sure. You know, anyone who's dealing in our generation with heavy stuff. And this I realized recently is that you, a lot of it is you have to learn to take care of yourself and heal yourself. And that has helped me a lot. It's helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. To be able to, because a lot of it is projection, a lot of it is caring, whatever. It's you know, it's deep. It's deep stuff. And the more I learn to, you know, share myself, and 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 I don't share. I won't. I don't share with people other. You know, if people open up to me, I won't share with anybody. Right, what they right, say. for sure. Right. But it's sharing things that why is that touching me so much? Why is that? You know, it goes back to me again. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. What? You know. Right. It's like the reverse of like me. Just like. When you see someone doing something wrong, you're, you could only identify it if you have some form of that. Exactly, meetup, exactly. You know, exactly, exactly. It's hard. It's hard. You have to be a big person. You have to work on yourself. The more I see, you have to work on yourself, and to be able to have that balance to be empathic, to be loving, to listen, 
to have a heart to listen. You know, they say the the Pnei Menachem, they say the kids were were um, were playing with his old uh, glasses. He got a pair of new glasses, and they says, Tati, Zadie, can we have it? And they put it on. He says, don't put it on. He says, the amount of pain that those glasses have seen. Hmm. You know, like, um, yeah, people. But healers need to be healing. Teachers, it's one of my favorite quotes. Teachers need to be learning, and healers need to heal. Anyone who's in the business, I guess, it's anyone of helping other people, uh, of, of being there for other people on any level, especially a Rebbe, especially a Rebbe, has to really be healthy, has to be very he healthy as they can be. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Out of any person who ever lived, if you could sit down with someone for an hour, who Ooh, would it I be? like that. Any person who ever lived? Yeah. That is, I love that question. Wow, that's a deep, deep question. Um, I'm thinking of, it's hard because these parshia, so I'm in that. If I'd be in later with Moshe. That's okay, Rabino, there's, no, there's no. I know, I know, I'm trying, it's more for the, I got it, but I'm trying to think. Um, I've thought about this before. Yo I like Yosef Atzadik a lot. Yosef Atzadik, maybe the Kleisenberger Rebbe, maybe the Kleisenberger Rebbe, maybe. Maybe the Kleisenberger Rebbe. Why the Kleisenberger Rebbe? I don't know how he how he did what he did. He lost eleven children, and his wife in the Holocaust. And he and he uh, just healed everybody, and was there for everybody. I mean, I, I don't even know where to even begin. He himself went to Auschwitz. I mean, you read his book. Anyone who's read is the War Years, and I mean, he's like my hero a little bit. The Kleisenberger Rebbe. That's a maybe. That's a really beautiful answer. Yeah, because his his, and that's not psychology. That's what I'm saying. That's not psychology. That's, you know, you listen to his tapes on his the tefillas and his crying. You read the stories of his love for the Jewish people and his, you know, through through his. H E M worse than Ganem, worse than Ganem to lose his eleven children, all of his children, his wife, and to just be a tzaddik like that like Rebbe what, what, you know when I go to his kever in Netanya I try and go there and not I don't go as much as I as I w want to I uh, I don't know I'm like I'm like I don't know it's weird that I feel so connected to it that's I've, I've uh, that's my own stuff but okay know, but anyway is yeah. um, out of the 613 mitzvahs do you have a favorite mitzvah <laughs> I like that question. Yeah. Am I allowed to have one? I don't know, but I've asked a lot of people <laughs> that question. I was I, I interviewed Rabbi Ruben Feinstein. I don't think I asked him that question. Yeah, that's like uh, yeah, yeah, right. Like I don't that's know. Kfira. Yeah, I don't want to get shut down. <laughs> it was just scary. My, the first thing that came to my mind is a little bit too easy, but like, um, but if it's the answer, it's the answer. Right. I'm trying to think. The, the I'll say what just came to my mind is is Kamocha is to love. Is that so deep? That's so deep. Is that claw? I didn't. I didn't. It's not mine. It's Rabbi Akiva. Right. So it's I'm everything. not copying. It's everything. Right. But he said that. It's a claw with Torah. It's everything. But have the Madis Sunny Hill said it also to the guy in the Gemara and Shabbos says he says the same thing. He said it in Aramaic. You know, he says Al Menas that I should be. What do I do to become a Jew? He said Madis Sunny Chlechav Chlechavid Vahavta Lerech Kamoicha. And I I know I love that one because it's like Kamocha. Hmm. It's the same thing I'm saying. You hate your friend, you hate yourself. Hmm. So if I don't love my friend, I hate myself because hmm. it's all kamocha. It's all you. It's all you. What's the worst advice you've ever received? <laughs> I like that. I like your questions, Yaakov. We should even off air. We should. We should do this. <laughs> Chachma is koachma, by the way. That you're good. You have a lot of power. Koachma is the letter is chachma. Mm, That's why Pesach night, what do we do? Ah, it's all questions. All questions. Because mm. questions are beautiful. I don't like answers as much as I like questions. My guys don't like that so much, especially in learning when you're learning. Like, it's okay. I've had questions for 20 years. Mm. Questions. Questions are so deep. No, don't ask that question. You know, a shot, giving it. Everyone likes to answer. Don't answer. Relax. 
It's good to have a question. Why is that? I'll tell you why the Holocaust. Give me a break. <laughs> Who's telling me why the Holocaust? Right. You know, the Holocaust? Right. You can't tell me why one person, no one can answer why one Jew died. You can ever say why one person would, uh, but uh, sorry, I'm not avoiding your question. No, no, it's What's fine. the worst advice? That. No, it's just powerful. That. No, it's powerful. You're what you're saying, like to ask, to ask deep questions. We all ask ourselves questions. That's the Masil Zishar, Ma Chova Sabalamo. Hmm. That's it. That's Why the am I? Question. That's the question. Always to ask. He says, I have call you Mechayev. Why? He says in Derech Chaim. He says it even stronger. He says, Why am I here? He says, A person has to do this at least an hour a day. At least to ask, Why am I here? Who am I? What's it all about? You know how powerful that is? If, you, if we ask ourselves that question, Why am I getting angry? What, what's my purpose of marriage? What's my purpose of sitting here with you? What's my, you know, people are not in a big, oh, what's my purpose in life? What's just simple? What's my purpose right now? Going before I go to sleep? What's my, you know, that's who am I? What am I? Anyway, you just, you're, you're inspiring me, Yaakov. What's the worst advice? We could do the reverse. If, I don't, if, yeah, if not if the you, best. You know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I think that that's a tough question because I think advice is very, I think all advice is good advice. Mm -hmm. so it might sound, I'm just talking it out with you. Like, like every everything has, you know, bad advice is, yeah, be mean to someone. Uh, no, but I'll give you, you know, a good example. Yeah, yeah, get me, like yeah. if, if someone told you, you can't open the rehab, you, you're, you're, right. you're busy with your yeshiva, right. Right. and you look back and you're like, I, I understand where they're coming from, but like at the end of the day, I think that was bad advice. I'm so happy that right, I opened Right, right, right. So I don't look at it that much like that, but I hear. Um, so, so let's do the verse. What's the best advice someone ever gave you? You're gonna love this one. It's so me, it's so fits. I went to Reb Shteyman, I was Eucha to see him many times. I went to Reb Shteyman, and it's so deep how you see it, how, how a, a gadol says something and it, and it sticks with, it sticks with me till now. I went in when I was in, uh, I started Leif Shlomo, you know Leif Shlomo in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was uh, I started that yeshiva. Giorman, that's oh, that's where Gee. Yeah, right yeah okay. exactly. Shout out to um, Gee, thank you, Gee. Yeah, Gee. Yeah, he's Guy great. You are a great guy, Gee. Yeah, we go way back. Um, it was started actually with someone else, Avi Rosenbluth. But I'm not going to get into it. That's a whole. You know, just to give him a shout out yeah, as well shout on out, that shout out Avi. for people who have who have uh, contributed to a lot in my life. Um, and when I went, then I was I was hired to come to Sharyashev in a very strong position. And it was a very it was a very uh, Sharyashev was where I was a Talmud also. You know, I was near Yisrael. I was, I'm a near Yisrael. I was in near Yisrael for many years. And Sharyashev, that's like what I those are my, you know. You went um, from near Yisrael to Sharyashev. Yeah, that's a whole story in itself. But yeah, I was yeah. Okay. But I'm uh, I say I'm like from the altar from Slobodka because Rav, Rav uh, you know Rav Ruderman was from the altar and Rav right. Hutner, Rav, right. Rav, whatever. That's also another conversation. But anyway, the point is, when I was going from Baltimore to here, to the five towns, and it was a big position, I was like, wow, I'm going to be like, you know, with big hush of a people. So I went to, I was in Eretzro, and I asked, I got a bracha from Rabbi Shteyman. And I was online, and I was, uh, my position was uh, um, Skan Menahel, like, you know, assistant, you know, uh, to, to Rabbi Halpern, the Rosh Shiva, um, um, and I and I said, what what would you? I asked him, Shaman. He was the Kol then. What what do you what 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 advice would you give me? And he looked at me. I'll never forget this. He looked at me, and he said, "You know." Hmm. And I was like, "That's not what I wanted to hear." <laughs> you wanted X Y Z. This is what you got to right. do. And then I like stopped again. I'm like, and then he like he like looked at me just like that, and he was like, he, there was a line. And he's like, go. <laughs> and, it, and it bothered me in the beginning. But then, but I'm still saying that story 20 years later because it's like, because I would give that lahavdal, I'm not Rup Shteyman, but I'm saying, uh, you know, I try and give that, give that over to my staff. I try and give that over to my, to the students in the yeshiva. Like, like, um, one of the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said one also an amazing quote. He said, he said his line was, leaders create followers. Great leaders create leaders. Hmm. I want to be a great leader, you know, where I'm helping people. So, you know, 
you know, when you give that pow- empowerment to somebody that you know, you know, and, uh, and you trust them, that in a certain way even gives them the ability to have so much power. You know, it's like, it's not, maybe they didn't even have the power before. It's like, maybe I didn't really know. But Rup Shaman told me I know. <laughs> and he believed that I knew. So now I know. And maybe when we do that with other people and we say like, you know, like you, we give them that confidence. We give them that like, trust yourself. Now it doesn't mean you can't talk things out and you can't, you know, get guidance and we can all, we, you know, well, for sure. I love listening to people and gaining from people. But at the end of the day, like, what's your gut? I heard this once. What's your gut? They say gut is, is uh, in Yiddish means God. Hmm. Like, what's your gut? Like, what's your, what's really, you know? Again, people get nervous. Like, oh, but I got to ask Das Torah. Okay, chill out. <laughs> you know, we're not saying you can't ask your Rebbe right, advice. Right, right, right. Everyone just relax. You know what right. I mean? But it means learning to trust yourself, learning that Hashem you know, that's a Reb Tzaddik. I don't know exactly where it is. I'm sure that is an easy one to look up. You might even be able to Google this one. Sitka's, People are going to send me a list of like 17 sorry. quotes from here. But Sitka it's Tzaddik. Mm-hmm. Kishem this is a famous one. Kishem Shetzarech. And I might be misquoting it, but it's okay. I'm doing, I'll do good enough. Kishem Shetzarech. A person has Shetzarech Lahamin Bashem. I'm sure you've heard this one, Yaakov. Kach Tzarech Lahamin Ba'atzmo. Kishem. Do you hear how crazy that is? To the degree that you believe in God, you have to believe in yourself. It's like so crazy. Someone's going to ask, oh, it's a steer what I said before that you don't have to understand, you believe in yourself, believe in yourself. <laughs> it's not a steer. You think about it, it's not a steer. You also have to believe in yourself. It's just that's not the purpose. The purpose is you have to know yourself. But knowing yourself is believing in yourself. Mm-hmm. Knowing yourself. How do I know myself if I don't believe in myself? I don't have that power. Kishem, he says, just like I have to believe in God, I have to believe in myself. The power of a person. That's crazy, Yaakov. And we see what could, to think that I that I'm that I can affect, you know, that I have a yeshiva like I have and a rehab. But look what you do. The amount of people you affect, what one person can do, what what it's we don't we don't we don't know. We really don't know the power of a person, and we squash the people. That's the problem. We, you know, we squash ourselves, hmm. you know. Hmm. That's kind of too negative. We squash ourselves, we squash, but what so I, I, I want to yeah, yeah, go, go, I, go. We, No, yeah. we're towards the, we're like at okay. the very end and I want to leave. I thought we're just getting started. I know, I know. Off. We could, we could. I just, if you put out like a this four hour like, episode that people will be like, I'm not uh, listening. Yeah, I'm not listening. Right, yeah, so like they'll too. already know. They'll know. It's, it's weird. When you're doing it, you don't know when the end's going to be, but people listening already know how long right, it's going right, to be. Right, right. Like they have that yeah, yeah, right. advantage That's over right, us right, now, right. even though we're in the past. Right. Whatever, it gets confusing. I like that. I like that. Uh, so could you, could you, could we finish off yeah, sure. with someone, let's say someone who is listening. Yeah. They are going through a struggle. They yeah, are yeah. trying to find themselves. Right. Could could you talk to them and yes, give them I would some love form to. of, yeah, of yeah. advice? That's why I happen to have liked the Coach Menachem because it was interactive. Oh my gosh, I love that. Right, love, that's why I do. It's my so much sh- hard to produce. My share, kudos sure. to Coach yeah, Menachem. Right? It's, it's it's so much easier doing this because right. then like right, you can edit. You yeah, can look, and also you like can, a Wi-Fi the internet has to be right, like right, perfect. Right, perfect, and, right, and, right. It's a know. lot of people. Do they hear you? Do I right? Right. In in my share that I give in, in in if you'll Spotify you could see my share you could listen to where, you'll where, just hear you'll on, just hear where, on where, Spotify well, I'll show it to you I'll no no but I want you to say it so people could look it up I don't know I have to look it up well, myself. probably type in your name Spotify, Rabbi Yoni Fisher Rabbi Yoni Fisher yeah I think it's so. on I YouTube also I think. Or not I think they just started the YouTube. I'm not a big. I'm not okay. so into that. So but you're much, more into the audio. Yeah. They just started the, the 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 YouTube. Got it. They said there already is some subscribers. I don't know. I don't. I I'm saw not, it. You have yeah, a bunch. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I. I'm okay. Not fine. A, but but uh, no. There. So I do that. Que- I do question and answer. Mm. I don't do that. I don't do that because I'm trying to be nice. I'm doing it because I want involvement. I want. I love. Mm. The I love the interaction because again, then it brings out. So you were asking. Sorry to yeah. go off. You were saying, what would I tell somebody who is? I mean, everyone's who's not struggling. If you're struggling with something, you're you're first of all it means you're alive. You're alive. You know, struggling. You know, I always say like the problem is not usually the problem. It's usually the fact that you don't like that. That's the problem. That's <laughs> the problem. You know, this week's parasha also, Shemo shal nalecha miyala raglecha. Kiam makam asher ata omen is ad kodesh. It's one of the most beautiful lines in, in the Bible, in the Torah. 
is like the place that you're in right now is so holy. You know, and the Yitzhahara wants to say, oh, you're not supposed to be here. You shouldn't be struggling with this. I'm supposed to be struggling with that. Hmm. And, and, and it's not the problem that's the problem. It's, it's the fact that you don't like the problem is a bigger, it's, it's similar to the pain thing. Right. That it's not the pain, it's the loneliness, but it's a separate thing. But it's a similar thing. Like usually our problems like are not, the problem is actually also this week's parasha that they say the, the t- okay, I'm not going to get into that. The t- I should interview you uh, every week because then that week's parasha will be so top of mind right, and like right, we'll bring right, out the Kudas. Right, right, right. No, but it's, but I think that, so that's number one to the person I would say. I mm. would say number one is, is, uh, and again, it's like you said that thing before, like, uh, don't worry, like that's going to like me telling you now that your problem is okay. You're going to be like, oh, okay, that's all I needed to hear. So first of all, I agree. It's not so simple that that's all you need to hear. Um, I think that that's why you need to share your problem because when you share your problem with somebody who's a good person to share with, I'm not talking to share with your father who's going to yell at you or your mother who's going to whatever, your somebody, I don't know. I'm just using those as examples. Parents are great parents, but I'm saying don't just share it with someone who you don't feel you know is going to help you, but I'm saying share it because that already st- starts the process to say like, it's first of all, most people I've never heard anyone come to me with a problem or me come to them with a problem and say, like, huh? Like, I love when guys come to me like, oh, I have such trouble getting up in the morning. Like, really? Like, like as a joke, like, really? You have trouble getting what do you mean? It, welcome to Humans. humanity. <laughs> I have trouble with chakras. Really, Rebbe? <laughs> really? You have trouble with chakras, really? Oh, I never struggled with chakras. Oh, I never struggled. <laughs> oh, it's hard for you to learn. <laughs> You know, Gemara is confusing. What? No, it's all, we're all, I have trouble with my phone. Who doesn't have trouble with their phone? Hmm. Right? I have trouble with my wife, you know, uh, like you said, you know, uh, now I'm, we all, we all have that. So number one is first to be, uh, I think just to be able to share that to, with someone who could say like, yeah, okay. And then number two is that, is I think that maybe the first thing that I said, like to then, you know, really, really like own 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 the fact that like this is what you know the they, they say the that's the pshat v'haser satan milfanenu macharenu like like the satan is always telling you about your past or your future hmm. he can't he can't get you here right now because here right now is is beautiful like this is what i'm struggling with like 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 this is my this is what's hard for me this is my challenge Obviously, there's more we could say, but those I think are very key. I think sharing, not walking alone in the darkness and sharing with someone and realizing that this is what Hashem, it's what, can I say one more shot or no? Yes, please. Okay. Kisei Tzela Melcham Olevecha is one of my most beautiful shots. I actually made this up like 30 years ago um, in Eretz Yisrael when I was sitting on my porch when I was a newlywed. Um, so it wasn't 30 years ago. It was probably 28 years ago. I'm not married more than that. Um, 29 years, so 28, 27 years ago, and I said, We all have an oyev, that is when we go out to war against our enemy, which is like the Chazal say, uh, the Yitzhahara. So we all have the enemy that's an oyev that wants to kill us. It's not like Yitzhahara, like uh, Taiva. It's, not, it's much deeper than that. It wants to kill you. What's the Yitzhah? Hashem gave it to you. When you stop fighting the fact that this is what Hashem gave to me for me. And we always reject what's right in front of us. Wherever you are, be there. Whatever struggle you have, you know, I don't like saying embrace it because that's a high level, but like don't reject it. Mm. Try and, you know, be be there with it. And that helps by sharing it, you know, sharing it with some your spouse, a close friend, the therapist, a Rebbe. And you know what? And if someone looks at you and says, what? And then get to go to somebody else because mm. that person is not, maybe that's not good advice. You know, get that's not, you know. I tell my guys when I sit with them, I know it's extreme to say, I say, I mean, I hope I'll never hear this, but like, even if you murdered someone, you bowed down to an idol, you did the worst of the worst. Like, I love you, and and like, I, you know, 
I, 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 you know, and it's never that no one's bowing down to idols and killing people. But right. I'm saying, so what are you struggling with? So you're struggling with what? Your your father, your mother, drugs, alcohol, insecurity, some of your sexuality, you know, pornography, the internet. But well, welcome to 2023. Welcome to welcome to to what people are struggling with. You know, you're struggling with depression. You're struggling with feeling low, confusion. You know, really beautiful. Thank you so much for doing thank this. Thank you, Yaakov. Thank you. Uh, this was amazing. Thank you. I, 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 <laughs> thank I, I you. love I'm this. In, I love I it. Love it too. I love it. Okay, podcast. Maybe I like. That. <laughs> See, I get excited. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. What What was your favorite part? What nugget did Robbie Fisher say in this week's episode that you're like, this was life changing for me? Um, I, I teared up. I I don't really tear up that often during these shows because it's a conversation, but he got me to tear up. So I want to hear if there's a moment that you teared up or a point that he made that you're like, I love that. So go ahead in the, the comments, leave what your favorite nugget is about this episode. If you like this show and you're like, I have a cousin who lives in Lakewood who doesn't have a smartphone or you have a cousin in Israel that doesn't use a computer, you could consume our podcast, all Living L'Chaim podcast on our hotline. The number, we have an American number, we have an Israeli number, and we have a UK number. So go ahead and the link in the show notes, you'll see a phone number there. So go ahead and tell your cousins who don't have access to the internet that they could still get inspired or get their kosher money tips or their that's an issue conversations or spirit of songs are not your typical podcast charlene we have so much in store for living the time so go ahead and subscribe to our youtube channel give us a thumbs up and give us five stars on spotify and apple every time you do it i go home and i tell my wife honey we're going to jamaica for a cruise and she says did someone just hit subscribe i say yes and she says, we're not really going to Jamaica for a cruise. I said, not yet, but when we hit, <laughs> I'm making this up as I go along. When we hit 10,000 uh, five stars on Apple or Spotify, I will take my wife to Jamaica. So if you want my wife to be happy, go ahead. If you want me to be happy, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. That was ridiculous. I made up on the spot clearly. Go ahead. Please go ahead and check out Steve's Unrestricted Podcast. Go ahead and follow my favorite whatsapp status sparks of a nation again not affiliated with me but they're great and i love them until next time you could find moments in your life to be inspirational i hate that catchphrase living l'chaim <laughs>